Welcome to All Things Marine, and today I'm going to be talking about what are cephalopods. Cephalopods are in, not in all of our everyday lives, but to give you a hint, when you eat calamari at that Italian restaurant or that seafood restaurant, you're eating a cephalopod. And I'm going to go more in depth into that as we go on throughout the video. Basic cephalopod info. This is information just regarding to all cephalopods. Cephalopods are mollusks, and what are mollusks? Mollusks are things such as bivalves, which are clams, oysters, scallops, or gastropods, which are snails and slugs, which I can make another video about that as well. Now, a cephalopod is a type of mollusk where their foot is formed into tentacles, whereas in other mollusks like the snail, the foot is like the slimy underpart of the snail that it moves along with. However, for cephalopods, it is formed in the tentacles which they use for maneuvering around and for capturing prey. This includes squid, cuttlefish, octopus, and nautilus, which I will go more in depth about each of those types of cephalopods in the video. Their main defense is ink, which they use when threatened by a predator. They spray this dark black purple ink. Almost all species do this. Speaking of the species, there are over 800 species of cephalopods out there and they are known to have some of the largest brains of any invertebrates. They're very, very intelligent. And they have something on their skin called chromatophores. Now chromatophores are pretty much camouflage, which allows octopus, squid, cuttlefish to change their colors to fit their surroundings or to send a message to communicate with other cephalopods. Now, for feeding, they use a beak. A beak is their mouth. They do not have any teeth. They just have a beak, which they use to crush their prey, which is usually arthropods, such as crabs or lobsters. The first type of cephalopod that I'm going to be going over is squids. Squids have eight arms plus two long feeding tentacles. So 10 tentacles in total. They have very, very large eyes. In fact, the giant squid, which I have in the lower right, a picture of that, the giant squid has the largest eyes of any animal on the planet, being the size of basketballs, which is pretty interesting to think about. They are nectonic, which means that they swim. If they were benthic, like the octopus, they would crawl or sit on the bottom. They have a siphon, which they use to propel through the water using something called jet propulsion. And this right, the first squid that you see here is the Caribbean reef squid, which does not get that big. However, they vary immensely in size between squid species. They can go from sizes of about an inch long to the size of a bus like the giant squid that we just discovered recently in the past 100 years we discovered the giant squid and the giant squid is easily the answer to the kraken myth that has long been told by sailors and everybody and you even see the kraken on the pirates of the caribbean caribbean moving on octopus are the next kind of cephalopod that we will be talking about. Octopus use poison to paralyze their prey. Many species do. Octopus are not the only cephalopod to do this. However, octopus are the main one known to use poison. The only one with poison that's actually lethal to humans, though, is the blue-ringed octopus, which you can see to the right, which is very interesting to talk about because the blue-ringed octopus gets to about the size of your thumb, not growing more than like a couple centimeters long. However, its venom 
is very, very potent, and it can kill a human being within minutes if untreated, which there is no anti-venom either. But they crawl along the ocean floor, octopus do. They have eight arms, and they range from one inch to up to 30 feet in the largest ones, which are the giant Pacific octopus, weighing upwards of about 200 pounds. These are very, the giant Pacific octopus is very common in aquariums across the world across the world and they can while they might be very large they can fit through a hole the size of a quarter because they have no bones so they are easily able to do this and to fit through these things i don't have a picture of it up here up here but the mimic octopus is another very interesting octopus species which can transform its body to look very similar to a stingray a lionfish or a sea snake just to avoid being eaten by predators. The other octopus, which is quite weird looking that I have posted here, is the Dumbo octopus. The Dumbo octopus, not much is known about it. However, it is found in the very dark, deep depths of the... And it lives in the very deep, dark depths of the ocean, which is very interesting to me especially because i love the deep twilight zone um abyssal zone all the different like darker levels of the ocean i find very interesting because we do not know very much about these parts of the ocean therefore i hope we learn more about it and moving on to the next type of cephalopod we have the cuttlefish. Cuttlefish have some of the largest brains of any invertebrate. And what makes a cuttlefish a cuttlefish is the cuttle bone, which is not actually a bone, but it's actually a buoyancy organ that is inside the cuttlefish. Um, and cuttlefish are more closely related to squids than they are to octopus. As you can see, they kind of look like more similar to squids than octopus. They have very, very complex eyes. Um, they have eight arms and two feeding tentacles like a squid. And they have very interesting reproductive behavior as there is a, there is a species of cuttlefish which actually, in which the male, some of the males will act as females and they'll pretend to be females so that they can get close to females and pretty much hook up with them. And this has a drawback though, because sometimes when these males, these males are the smaller males, which are less likely to get with the females because the larger males are the ones that do. The small males are the ones that trick themselves, trick the females into thinking that they're females so they can just kind of hit it and quit it in a way however sometimes the the larger males think that they're the smaller males are female females so they try to mate with the males and then it's this whole big mess so but there is another species of cuttlefish which is actually very um interesting it's called the flamboyant cuttlefish which is actually venomous we don't know what the venom does however it's a very interesting looking creature very pretty and the last um cephalopod we have here is the nautilus the nautilus is the only one of these cephalopods which is shelled and it is the oldest species of cephalopod they're related to ammonites which were around whenever the dinosaurs were around and they have up to 90 arms and they are very 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 rare a, a shell from a nautilus is a very expensive thing and that is what cephalopods are as a summary and my favorite cephalopod is the giant squid it's pretty interesting to me but yeah, um, comment below if you have any questions or would like to learn more about cephalopods and comment below what other kinds of videos you guys want to see from me in the future. 
Uh, I'll have my sources listed in the description for the pictures and for my information. Thank you guys so much for watching. This is All Things Marine.